Welcome to the final section on unit testing. Nothing could be more important to creating professional quality apps than unit testing. Unit testing creates a test for each method of your application. We'll be using NUnit to do our unit testing, and along with that, we'll be using Mock, as you'll see as we go along. Let's return to our code. Go to the solution and add a new project. The type we want is an NUnit test project for .NET Core. You can search for that, and it will come up with a few, C Sharp, VB, make sure you choose the C Sharp one. Click Next and give your project a name. The traditional name is the name of the solution, followed by the word tests. And you can see in the namespace, we have animal.tests. In the test explorer, you can see all the way down to the first test. When you choose to create an end unit project, a setup is created for you and your first test. Setup is used to share code among tests. Let's return to the about view model, where we're going to do some artificial coding to give ourselves something to test. Every end unit test has the attribute test. They will all be public void, and you want to give them a very descriptive name. So this says about page constructor works. This way, when you see your test run, and especially if it fails, you know exactly what happened. The key to unit testing is the assert. There are a couple ways to do asserts. There's the classic way, and then the fluent way. Here, we're going to make an instance of our view model. We can't do that because we don't have a reference yet to the project that has the about view model. Notice that on the quick help, it says add reference. We could use that to add the reference, or we can go up to the references for the test project, right click on the dependencies, and choose add reference. Now we simply check the main project, and access to the main project is now available to the test project. So now we can add the using statement and we can create a new about view model. We now have an instance of the about view model in our test. And so we can access anything in the about view model. What we're going to do is access the title, which is a property of the about view model. And we're going to use fluent testing. So we're going to use the method should. However, to do this, we need to add the fluent library. To do that, we're going to go over to our project, manage NuGet packages, go to browse, type in fluent, and up comes the fluent assertions package. We're going to install that package. It's going to ask us to confirm that's what we want. Now we go back to our NUnit project, and we can use should, which is part of the fluent assertion, and it's going to come up and say, you need a using statement. Next, we're going to put a dot, and there are all sorts of things that you can assert using Fluent Programming. But here, all we want to do is assert that title should be, and now in parentheses, we'll put what it should be, which is about. And that is a Fluent assertion. Very readable, and the results are very readable. Let's run that in our test runner, and it passes, as you can see, by the green check mark. Now, let's say we made a mistake in our code, and instead of setting the title to about, we set it to a but. When we run our test, it should fail. And sure enough, it does. And if we look at why it failed, we can see that there's a sentence that explains exactly what went wrong. And that's the advantage of fluent asserts. Let's go ahead and put that back to about and come back to our tests. We'll comment out the first assertion, and we'll go ahead and get the length of the title and say that it should be five. And you can see again how readable this is. Let's run the test, and that passes. In classical assertion, you never make more than one assert in each test. But with fluent, you can because it points out exactly what went wrong. Once again, let's change it to about two. 
and this time the test fails because we were expecting a length of 5 and we have a length of 6. Let's come back to our about page constructor works and we're going to use a new assertion scope and we say using so that everything within that scope will be covered by the assertion and then will be destroyed after it runs. And we're going to take our two assertions and put them in that assertion scope. And this is how you run more than one assertion at the same time in a unit test using Fluent. When we run that, we can see that they both passed. And it's quite clear from looking at the test results what worked. However, if we go make a change and they fail, you would think there'd be some confusion about what failed, but the error message is so clear that there's no confusion at all. Coming back to our unit test, we're going to create another assertion. This time we're going to assert the title should be equivalent to about. Equivalent to means ignore case. So here we're saying that the title should be equivalent to all lowercase about. We know there's a capital, but that's going to pass anyway because equivalent to ignores case. And so we expect all three to pass. One failed. Let's look at why. And that's because we didn't fix about to have the right name or length. Let's run again. And this time they should pass. And they do. Notice next to test in parentheses it says two. There are two tests under that. To learn more about Fluent Assertions, go to the fluentassertion.com website where you can find a dictionary of all of the different ways of asserting. They have comprehensive documentation. Let's take a quick look at that. And you can see there's a getting started. And then on the left, you can see that there are a number of topics for different kinds of assertion.